Okay, we'll start by tracing a circle the size we need for our ultimate dungeon terrain. I'm just using a Sharpie to trace, but you can use whatever you have that'll mark the foam, pencil, pen, whatever. I'm tracing a previous piece I created that fits my 18 inch Lazy Susan. You can make your circle whatever size you want. To make it more sci-fi, I decided to add some edges to this. I started by marking a reference point And I decided to make each side 4 inches to support standard 1 inch squares. This ended up not mattering that much in the end, but something to think about if you decide to go this way. I just repeated this step until I was all the way around the circle. Fortunately for me, the math worked out pretty well. If you have a different size circle, you might want to confirm that your dimensions work out and your edges will match up when you come all the way back around the circle. My last edge is not quite four inches. But next we'll take a sharp knife and make a series of shallow cuts along the lines that we marked previously. This is something that we've done a million times before. We don't want to try and cut through with one big long slice, so just make a bunch of shallow ones and go all the way around the circle. Keep going around to slowly making your cuts deeper. Switch to a fresh blade if you need to. Remember, foam is really hard on these blades and dulls them pretty quickly. I got mine cut about 90% through and then I broke the edges off. This left a non-smooth edge which wasn't ideal, but we'll cover this later with some card and that'll uh, fix it all up. You can see the rough edge there. Once you have it cut out, test fit it into your Lazy Susan if you need to. Do any final trimming so that it fits good. And once you're happy, we can move on to the next step. See the mine fit in there pretty good, but I did a little bit of trimming after to make it fit really, really good. So next we need to add our grid. I use a metal ruler to make the shallow cut for the first line. And once I had that line, I measured over four inches at two points along that first line to ensure the next grid line I placed on there is parallel to the first line. This is key. Once we have the two lines, we can rotate the grid 90 degrees and mark two points four inches apart. Just like that. Grab a triangle. Line it up along one of the scored lines that we uh, made, the two new marks. We'll draw a line across it to the other line. This will make our grid in the other direction. Just like that. Repeat this with the other mark, giving us the start of our grid lines in the other direction, as I said. Let me just take our ruler, line it up. Get that knife, nice shallow score mark along here. Do it on the other one as well. And extend it all the way across the face of the UDT. Repeat this on all of your lines, four inches apart, um, until your surface is covered in a lightly scored four inch by four inch grid. Should look something like this when you're done, depending on the side of your surface, size of your surface. All right, to give us a usable yet sci-fi feeling grid, we're gonna measure over one inch on either side of the scored four inch by four inch grid. Just like this. Using the same method as before, marking it two places and then connecting the dots to ensure parallel lines.
So line up the dots again with the metal ruler and lightly score that line with the razor knife. Repeat this process across the surface of the terrain grid. This will give us a grid that isn't simply one inch by one inch, but it will be easy to count if you need that in your game. Basically, you can end up with two inch by two inch squares with one inch squares around them. All right, after all that measuring and scoring, we should have a grid that looks kind of like this. The next step is to redefine our grid lines. Grab a pencil, ballpoint pen, or similar, and go over those lines, making sure they're a little bit larger and deeper and easier to see. We've done this many, many times before with other grid patterns, so it should be pretty commonplace. And as you can see, as we do this, that grid really starts to pop out. Looks pretty cool. I like it. All right, so we're going to put uh, some rivet. It's on here. Um, I wanted to keep the process simple. So I ended up cutting off a plastic Q-tip and pressing it into the foam. I tried a whole bunch of other ways, but they were just a lot of work. So I pressed and twisted to get a good impression. Um, I learned if I press too hard with the Q-tip, it'll punch through the foam instead of leaving a nice mark. It's not the end of the world, but it's uh, not good, so something to watch for. There you can see how they look there. Get pretty good impressions. Once I was happy with my technique, I went to each corner of the grid and pushed in a little rivet texture. This will really help sell it as a uh, metal plating. See how it looks there? This takes a little bit of work, but it's easier than like cutting and gluing little discs or some other method. There you go, looking good. Just fast forward to where we uh, finished it up. And you can see that it looks like a nice metal plate. All right, so we're gonna get our Mod Podge black magic coating here. So this is, of course, just Mod Podge with a little bit of black paint in it. The black paint isn't to really give you a black coverage, it's more so you can see what's been covered by the Mod Podge. So if you're making this, don't worry about getting it pitch black. You can see here, mine's pretty patchy, you can see through it. But I know I've got Mod Podge in that area. That'll just kind of seal the styrofoam, give it a little bit, a little bit of strength. Even out your painting here. Don't forget to get your edges. On there, nice and thick. Get that foam protected. All right, next we're gonna take some black paint and give it a base coat. This will make it a nice solid black color that we can work with. So I just use standard craft paint. I put a little bit of water in there and mixed it up just to get a little bit of better flow. Tested it out, make sure it's flowing in the cracks pretty good. Not bad. Just go over the entire surface. And this will actually cover easier because that Mod Podge is already dark. So just go over the whole surface with black. Make sure you get all in all the cracks. All the rivet textures. Once you have it all black coated, we need to measure the sides. Uh, these should be about four inch by one inch, depending on the thickness of your foam. With the correct measurements, we're gonna cut out uh, some cereal box card. We'll need this for one piece for each of the edges. This cladding will be used to hide that rough foam that we that I got earlier when I broke my, my uh, foam edges off. There we go. Just 
measuring over my four inches approximately using a square this time because I have one. If not, just say, do what we did before with like a triangle. Once I have one cut out, I'm going to put it down here, use it as a story stick and just kind of mark out the width of each of the each of the pieces of cladding, which will be, as I said, around one inch, depending on your, your foam thickness. Just count them out, get as many as you need. I just went back over with that square and finished my lines off so I could cut them out easier. And I grabbed that metal ruler Trimmed off my uh, excess cardstock. Use that ruler again. Cut out my initial square and then grab the ruler one more time and started doing it. This does not take very long. It's pretty pretty straightforward. So just cut them all out. Probably do it with one pass through knife is sharp, but if it takes two, it takes two. All right, double check you got enough. Grab our foam and our hot glue gun. Hot glue is kind of a pain because it's kind of you know gets everywhere and pushes out and hot but it's fast so you could do this with like a PVA or a white glue or a Mod Podge but you'd have to be you have to wait a little bit longer to get the, those pieces of cladding to dry on for that glue to set so instead I burned my fingers and made a little bit of a mess because I am impatient glue on there I'm gonna spread it out a little bit so it doesn't squish out the edges quite as much but as you can see does anyways just kind of get it on there and wipe it off with your finger if you need to don't burn yourself though so there we are looking pretty good now there's some gaps between the pieces of cladding you can leave it like that I went back in with a glue gun and just kind of filled them in to make it look like it was welded a little bit not ideal but eh, it looked pretty decent I was happy with how it turned out so we're gonna take our Mod Podge over here I don't know if this is 100% necessary but Thought it was a decent base coat anyway, so I just covered all that cardboard with uh, the Mod Podge glue and black paint. And then of course back over with the black, just made sure that we had it a uh, nice good black coat on here. And incidentally, this is why we did the edges before as well, even though we covered them. If we hadn't have painted the edges, it would have been a lot of pink foam exposed underneath those pieces of cladding. It would have been a pain in the ass to try and paint afterwards. So just get your paint and uh, a little bit of water and kind of go over the edges. Make sure you get all the cardstock and pink that was exposed covered up nice. Find any areas that you missed on the surface and just finish off your black base coat. Nothing complicated here. This is nice and easy. All right. So now we're going to put down a base coat of silver. Um, doesn't matter too much if you get all the cracks. In fact, it's kind of better if you don't. But put down your silver. Get that entire thing covered with a fairly decent... Uh, coat of the silver paint. I forgot how to use my words there. You don't have to have it completely covered. In fact, like I have here, you can see a little of the black between it. You can see some of the, the brush marks in there. It gives it almost like a brushed steel look, which looks pretty cool and definitely tr helps to sell the concept of steel plating that we're trying to. Get your edges. Looking good. I like it. Now we're gonna get a black brown wash. This is just kind of a homemade one. I'm just putting it on and pretty liberally and coming back over with a 
toilet paper, paper towel, whatever, and just dabbing off the excess. This is getting us our black brown wash into the cracks a little bit more, making them stand out and giving it a little bit of a darker color to our, our silver, our grungy looking. Looking good, just keep doing that, get it all covered. Lots on there, nice thick coat, it's pretty watery. Back over with your tape, paper towel and dab it off. You see the difference between the covered stuff and the uncovered stuff in this shot. You'll note there's also little bits of paper towel sticking to it because it's getting so wet, but just wipe those off. Just cover it up, finish any areas you need to. Dab it off again. Get rid of those extra pieces of paper towel. You don't want them. Make sure you're not leaving anything behind. Now we're going to go back to some black. So I tried a bunch of different methods here. If you have a really steady hand, you have maybe a thin enough paint, you can do them one at a time like this. This is working okay. But did I mention I was impatient? This was taking too long, as far as I was concerned. So I went back to a method that we used more like with the, the wash. So we'll see me go to that in a second here. Dabbing off the excess. I didn't like how it looked. So now I'm just taking that uh, a much wetter black paint and just kind of running the brush along each of the edges. And then coming back over with that paper towel and wiping it off. Just pushing it in and spreading it out. Just making those black lines stand out more. This of course ends up darkening your silver a little bit. Again, making it more grungy. But I'm building this for Alien, as you figured out from the opening of this, so it seemed to work okay. If you wanted to do like this for a ship like uh, when it's Stromo, it's more white inside. So you might want to ease back on all this this uh, dry brushing or dry brushing, this, this washing and, and wiping off. And we did it over the edges as well. A little bit of that black brown wash or black. You don't remember what this one was, but you want to make this a little bit darker so it matches the front, the top of it. Did this the same way. Put on a nice wet coat. Went back over that paper towel and just kind of dabbed it off. See kind of the, one of the welded edges there. And that's uh, pretty much it. So here you can see the UDT out here with some terrain on it. And uh, it worked pretty good for my game, and I hope this works pretty good for you.